Today we're going to be talking about this pen. Um, this is a wingback fountain pen. Wingback started off with mechanical pencils. They're in the UK. Uh, they've won a Red Dot Design Award, which, which is um, uh, quite cool. I'm just double checking. That's right. Yes, that is right. Red Dot. <laughs> yeah, Red Dot Design Award. And now they made a fountain pen. It is smaller. It is machined. It is clearly kind of minimalist. And there are different materials available. I'll talk about that as I tilt the camera down. I think this is a very fun pen and I've had a lot of fun with this. So I'm going to cover the parts of the pen. I'll do a writing sample. I'll tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Let's get started. Oh, and sincere apologies to Wingback. I, 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 it took me months to review this and I'm very sorry. But here we are. Okay, the Wingback fountain pen comes in this cardboard tube and I love this. I don't care about the box, I care about the pen. Other people's opinions may vary. Uh, has a bit of a, a background of the company, their sort of, I guess, philosophy. Has a QR code that you can scan. I like this a lot because if you don't want this, you can recycle it. It's not a big box, there's no plastic parts, it's just this. Um, that you pull out and then you get this little pen sleeve, uh, which feels to me, I haven't actually looked this up uh, because frankly I forgot that was in there. It feels to me almost like a canvas material. Um, nice sort of rip stop almost uh, pattern on there. And you have a little sleeve. And then you have the actual pen. Now this one is a roller, so I'm very careful that stays there. Okay, shouldn't have put it there though. Let's try and put this here and maybe not zoom in quite that much right next to a Pilot Metropolitan, that is what you get. So it is a smaller pen, I think meant to be carried around in a pocket, and then you have this to keep it safe. These pens come in steel or brass finishes for 149 US, as well as titanium or black steel. As I'm recording this, the black steel is sold out. Those were 207 US. Extra fine, fine, medium and broad nibs, as well as double broad and 1.5 millimeter italics. In, I'm fairly certain this is number five. Uh, they're machine pens, they have a screwed barrel for posting. I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, they have a neural grip, which makes for a quite comfortable grip section. And they are designed and manufactured in England, and they have a lifelong warranty. Uh, and like I said before, their mechanical pencil actually won a red dot award. So pretty cool. Uh, let's let's talk about the parts of the pen. So you have this neat bevel, uh, which is not unique to the brand, but I mean it's a nice, nicely beveled cap, which I quite like. You have the wingback logo engraved into that. This is the cap. Knurled bit is really section, and then you have the barrel with threads at the end. So you can unscrew the cap, post it securely. Then you have this very nice minimalist pen. The knurled section, as I said, quite comfortable, not too sharp, offers a very nice uh, grip. And overall, I find the size very comfortable when posted. Unposted, for me, the pen is too small. But I mean, that, of course, the pen's a bit in your hand size. I'm sure there are people who could use it unposted. A lot of threads there, but because they're not on the section at all, you don't feel them, and it makes for a very comfortable writing experience. This is a Bok nib. It's unbranded, just has the Bok logo, but Bok nibs are good nibs. A nice plastic section, and then I'll unscrew the barrel, and you have the cartridge. Uh, it came with a cartridge, I'm pretty sure. Um, but this I, I put in myself. Um, O-rings on these two sides keep the barrel and the cap in place. I will come back to that. With a minimalist pen, they're, they're minimalist, right? So there isn't an awful lot to show. There's no clip. I did not see any like additional clip option or something on the website. So this is what you get, uh, but quite nice. So I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is these descriptions tend to be a little shorter because they're minimalist pens. There isn't an awful lot to really show you. Let's talk about how the pen writes. So we have here the wingback fountain pen. This is a, uh, actually I, I'm forgetting now the nib grade, but I'm pretty sure it's a medium or a fine. So I'm going to go with that. And it's just a black cartridge. I, I don't know, I just pulled like a cartridge from a stack of cartridges. I don't know what brand it is, it's just black ink. 
The writing experience with this nib is quite nice. It's smooth, it's uh, consistent, I haven't had issues with it running dry, I haven't really had issues with it skipping or hard starting. Uh, it just keeps going, brown fox. And the feed keeps up quite well, even with very fast writing. Um, pretty wet, kind of a nice wet writer. Line variation, I mean, it's a round nib, um, not marketed as a flex nib or anything, but I have found you can squeeze out some line variation. Always very careful, it's not a flex nib. Uh, and as you may have just seen, you can get some railroading. Um, so, but if you go very slow, it is a steel nib. Uh, you could squeeze out a bit of line variation. Reverse writing. Is possible, is not super sharp, and takes this from, I would say, a medium to maybe an extra fine. If you want that, it is possible. I think that's what I have to say about the parts of the pen and all that. That's a weird D, but there we are. Let's talk about likes and dislikes. Things I like, things I don't like about this pen. In my mind, there's a lot to like. The minimalist pens are not always for me. In this case, I think it was executed properly. It's a cylinder, right? Uh, steel or titanium, or whatever material you get. It looks quite cool. The knurling on the section makes for a pleasant, comfortable grip. It's on the thinner end. The, it's not a super girthy pen. I'm just posting it off camera here, but give me a sec. It's on the thinner end of things, and I have found that for very long writing sessions, I, but that's me, I would prefer something a little girthier. I find that my hand gets a little cramped up, but then I tend to prefer larger pens. I don't have the world's smallest hands. So that, that is, that's part of that. As a writer, very good. Um, very pleasant nib. I really enjoy it. Um, it writes very pleasantly, very consistent ink flow. I haven't had any issues with it, hard starts or skipping or any of that, so that is all great. I really, really like that. Um, things I don't like so much about it. I'm just looking at my notes here. I suppose um, at these prices, 149 US, 207 US, it's not cheap. It's I'm not sure if we would quite call this a pocket pen because it is a bit longer, but having said that, I think it is kind of an EDC sort of thing meant to be put in a pocket, for example. It's not super cheap, right? You are dealing with a steel nib, um, which, you know, it's, 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 it's a nice nib, it's a Bach nib, but I mean, it's not, it's not a gold nib, it is a steel nib. I didn't put in a converter, it would be possible You'd be looking at something like one of those Caveco squeeze converters or something. You, you, the regular converters do not fit. The, the, the barrel is too, too short for it. But anyway, in light of this, I, I don't find it the cheapest pen, but it is very well made. It's solid and it writes very nicely. So I will say that about it. It is a very pleasant writer. Um, one thing that I... There's two more things I wanted to comment on. One is both the barrel and the cap are kind of held in place by these o-rings. The thing with o-rings is that they can snap, especially when metal grinds on them all the time, they'll wear out. You can pick up o-rings in a lot of different you know, DIY stores, you'll be able to find something. What I've found helps a little bit is put a bit of silicone grease on it that, that lubricates the that, that, that threads a bit and that tends to make the o-rings last longer. I've capped and uncapped this a number of times. I don't see any wear and tear. I'm just saying it is nice to have the O-ring. This pen, especially if you carry it in a pocket, it will not accidentally uncap, but O-rings wear out. That, that's just a, a thing to be aware of. The final thing I will say is, and I'm not sure if this is a fair criticism, but a couple of times, including earlier today when I was filling it up again to, to be able to do the review, is that it's hard to tell which end is which. I'm going to hold it up. Okay, and then you're gonna 
say as quickly as you can whether the cap is on the left or on the right. Are you ready? One, two. I bet you have to look. And it doesn't take you half an hour, does it? But it's not clear. Right? Now, there is marking on the cap. It says wing back. I don't know if you can read that, but it says it says wing back, so that, that gives it away. And of course, you don't have the threads. The threads are on the barrel. There are no threads on the on the um, end of the cap. But having said that, I, I have opened the wrong end, and then you're ready to write, and, and then you have this in your hand, right? So that that is something to think about. If if that really matters to you, super quick deployability of pens. I'm not sure a fountain pen would be the right thing for you then, and maybe you would need a vanishing point or something with a retractable nib. But having said so, that's the only thing. It's just a small thing. It's not really something that bothers me, but it's something I found kind of comical a couple times that I just opened it on the wrong end. So, there we have it. A very kind thank you to Wingback for sending me the pen. I think it's a very nice product, and I've had a lot of fun with it. Sorry it took me so long to review. Let me know what you think of the pen. And that's all there's to it. See you next time. Bye.